let's roll um, right into the rest of the conversation. So um, basically what we're gonna do with this is create like a scaling pattern. Um, I don't need to see all of this. Um, let's increase the squares so that they're about the full size of the grid and then you can turn off the grid. All right, so you'll have like a little gap in between them. Something like that, looks like bathroom tile. Um, so what we're gonna do is using the scale function, I'm going to use a point to define how these, um, to basically define how the, the rectangles themselves will be uh, scaled relative to its distance from the point. Okay, that's why it's called an attractor point or a magnet. Um, so let's go to transform and under affine, that's where scale is located. Okay, so it is going to ask you for three things. It's gonna ask you for the geometry that it is scaling, and for us, that's going to be the rectangles. And what you're seeing now is that it's trying to scale it relative to the origin. We don't want that. What we wanna do is scale it relative to the center of each element. Um, so I'm gonna pull the points from the grid. Is that clear? And then it's going to ask me for a scaling factor. And that's where it gets a little dicey. Okay, the scaling factor is something that we have to generate. So um, in this case, what we're actually gonna be doing is taking a range of numbers that we measure, right? So if I put a point, say, here, I'm gonna automatically measure where every single one of these rectangles is from that point. And let's say one of them is, um, it looks like it's only like two feet away. And then the one at the farthest end looks like it might be 65 feet away, right? So I'm gonna take that range, that domain of numbers, two feet, 65 feet, and I'm gonna reduce it to a percentage value to scale by, okay? Do you understand the concept of what we're doing? You guys are looking at me like with blank stares. <laughs> okay, well, you'll see what it is. So let's, um, I'm gonna work backwards and show you how to do this because it's not something you would be able to figure out on your own. Um, let's go to math. Actually, first, let's measure the distance, okay? So let's go to, um, vector, Point, yeah. Um, we're gonna go to vector and point and we're gonna pull closest point. And let's take a look at its anatomy. Um, it, is, it says that it's going to find the closest point in a point collection, right? Um, but what its output is, is it's going to give you the closest point, right? So that's its main function, but its secondary function is that it's going to give you Look at this, the distance between P and C, which is pretty cool, right? So um, what I'm gonna do here is plug in um, the points to search from and the cloud of points to search. So it's a little um, kind of backwards because the point, it, it's singular where it says point and it's plural where it says points to search from but what you wanna get is the distance from the singular point, okay? From the singular point. So um, I'm gonna search each one of the points in the cloud of points that I have here in my grid, and I'm going to search from my attractor point. Whoops, how do I do that? So set one point, I'm gonna select this, plug that in, and then when I drop a panel on that baby, I get these values. Okay, so my numbers were like way off because I forgot that each one of these cells is 10 feet. But um, I mean, we're talking 
couple hundred feet, going all the way down, 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 something lower here, we're in the 40s, something in the 30s, 26, 20, 6, 6 might be the lowest, 3. So this, I mean, this possibly could be the closest one. Um, so anyway, those are distances. They're distances that are measured from each of those rectangles. So um, I'm actually going to flatten this whole thing so it all reads as one giant list, right? Um, and we're then going to change that list, OK? Uh, let me also clear this up for you. Vector point. Vector point. OK, so I'm going to change this list by creating a new domain. Right? The domain is like 3 to like 240. I want it to be from 0 or 0 0.1 to maybe 1.0, something like that. Does that make sense? Because right? that's a scale factor, which is what we're trying to fill in here. Scaling factor means it's a multiplier. means if you multiply it by 1, it's exactly the same size. If you multiply it by 2, it's 2 times the size. If you multiply it by 0.5, it's half the size, right? So I'm going to, I already set the size of my grids to be the max I want them to be. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let's go back into math, and let's go to domain, and let's do, um, remap numbers. Just read what it does. It says <coughs> it remaps numbers into a new numeric domain. So since I've shown you how to construct a domain, we now know what a domain is. We know the domain that we want to create, and we need to create the domain that we want to map it to. So it's going to ask us for, first, the values to remap. That's going to be your distances. So those are the numbers that I want to change. Then it's going to ask me for the source domain, which we can actually get by measuring. Um, under math domain, we can uh, take what's called bounds, and it's going to measure the lowest value and the highest value in a list of numbers. Similar to list length, but now it's just for lowest and highest values, right? It gives you the range. So I'm going to plug that in to D. Right, so it's 3.37 and 237, so closest and farthest. Um, plug that in there. Math, domain. And then finally, it's going to ask us for a target domain. What's my target domain? Zero point one or zero point zero one, whatever you know, um, level of accuracy you need. Um, but I'm going to go back into math, go into domain, and I'm going to construct another domain. Plug that in there. And uh, so my my first number, I'm just going to make it a static. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'll do both sliders. Let's say zero point oh one to 1.0. Plug that one into A, and let's plug this one into B, and let's go up to 1.0. Now we have, let's take a look at the, a comparison of these two values. Um, the remapped number is the one I want you to look at, so that's here. So let's take a look. We've got 237, which is our highest number in the list, 1.0. Then 230, which gets changed to 0 0.970, right? Slightly lower. And if you look at the, the proportion of those numbers side by side, they correspond. That's because they are those numbers. They just got squished down into a much smaller range or domain. 
You guys following? Okay. Now, get rid of these. All we have to do now is plug those into scale factor. And what you've got is this. I was expecting a lot more oohs and ahs. <laughs> Guys, it's the third week. You're only 20% through. Actually, less than that. So anyway, here's an ooh and ah moment, I guess. You can move this, and it will remap. <laughs> Cue the oohs and ahs. Yeah. yeah. OK. Right? This is pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> I mean, look at that. OK, well, anybody have any questions about this before I let you catch up? No? OK.